Today I'm going to show you a cheap and easy way to hack in an auxiliary input on a Honda Accord. So I'm going to show you two methods to hack into this radio and it'll only cost you a dollar for this cable. The first method will hack into the FM modulator and that should work for most radios. The second method will work if you've got an external CD or cassette changer that uses the Honda accessory plug to connect to the main radio. Now we're going to need to hack into this radio so the first thing we're going to do is remove the radio from the vehicle. First thing we're going to do is remove this trim panel, then remove these two screws here below the ashtray. Then we're going to remove the ashtray, it's held in by two clips, and then two more Phillips screws. Then I'm going to remove two more screws over here. And then I can pull off this CD changer face. Now at this point there's four 10 millimeter nuts that you can take off to remove your CD changer if your car is so equipped. And then we can remove the six CD changer and its wiring plug. So next underneath the radio we need to remove these two screws. These are eight millimeter bolts. And then I'm going to remove the three Phillips screws from the top. We're going to grab the radio and pull it out of the dashboard. Now here at the back of the radio we're going to pull out the antenna one wiring harness here and one wiring harness up at the top here. And finally once all the connections are loose we can remove the radio from the vehicle. Alright so here I've got the Honda radio removed from the vehicle. I'm next going to remove these screws on each side to remove these brackets off the radio. And then the side brackets can then be removed. And then we can remove the actual CD player. It's just got this connector here that sits on that connection over there by the screen. So we're going to need to open up the CD player in order to get access to the auxiliary lines. To do that, we're going to open up all of these screws on the side here that hold the heat sinks on, on the back, as well as these to get this cover off. Alright, so I'm just going to get started. There's a total of 14 screws going all the way around the radio. And then we can lift off the heat sinks. Alright, so once all the screws are removed, we can then remove the cover. And that reveals here your CD player. Now the CD player needs to be removed, so first we're going to remove the dust cover. It's just held in by double-sided tape. And then there are four Phillips screws. Two on the top here, and then these two on the bottom here that need to be removed next. I'm just going to remove those screws, they're the smaller types of screws. And once all four screws are removed, we can then remove the CD player. There's just this one connector here that connects to the motherboard over here. Now here we've got the motherboard, it's held into this case here by four screws. Two at the top here, and then two at the bottom here. So I'm going to remove that next. And then I can remove the circuit board from the case. So this here is the heart of the project, it's a 3.5 millimeter extension cable I got from the dollar store for like a buck. Alright so here I've got my auxiliary wire, what I'm going to do is chop it and strip the ends of this. Alright so using a 3.5 millimeter pinout diagram you'll determine that the top one is left, the middle one is right and the bottom one is ground. So I can correspond those to these wires and solder it to the board accordingly. So as I've mentioned previously there's actually two methods you can use to solder in your aux line. The first one is to go through the FM modulator which will override the FM signal. So to do that we're going to solder to the output of the modulator which is labeled AF out on this board here and any ground connection on the board. So what's going to happen is your auxiliary line is going to override the FM signal then it's going to head over here to these resistors and capacitors which act as a filter before it goes over to your digital sound processing unit and then out to these amplifiers to the speakers. Alright so I'm just soldering this ground wire to this ground point on the board here. So I'm just soldering the left side wire to the AF out on the FM modulator. Finally I'm going to tape down all my connections on the back of the board. Now you might be tempted to solder wires to these auxiliary lines over here on the board where it says aux detect left, right and ground. Except when you flip over the board you'll notice that there's a bunch of capacitors, diodes and an IC chip that's missing before it goes to the sound processing unit. So that won't work anyways. So this here is where the CD connects to the board. Now you might be tempted to solder your aux wires to the left, right and ground of the CD. However I've traced these and they actually end up going nowhere. That's because the CD uses a digital output and uses the data port here. This here is your digital sound processing unit. It's actually responsible for a lot of stuff. It communicates via the I squared C bus and that tells it which input to select from. So if you want a digital input, for example your CD player, or an analog input like your FM modulator. The second method is to inject your auxiliary lines to the left and right input of your CD changer or your Honda accessory which uses this 14 pin. For that you're going to need a CD changer or some other device that uses the MBUS protocol to talk to this chip to tell it to select this input. Now here's the back of that CD changer plug. You'll see your left and your right minus and your left and right plus that you can solder your aux wires to. However, if you've got this 14 pin accessory wire that goes to your CD changer, you can just hack into this wire directly and not even have to open up your circuit board or solder anything. So just to make it easier to run the wire out of the stereo on the bottom of the casing, I'm just going to bend this little tab up. And now that that's bent back, I can run my 3.5 millimeter jack 
through there and to the other side. And then I can run the wire inside and reinstall the motherboard back into its casing. And now we can pretty much reassemble the radio with all the screws. So I've got the cross bracket under, I'm going to screw down the motherboard. Then I can replace the CD player. Then I'm going to replace the four screws. And then replace the dust cover. And then I'm going to replace the lid. And then replace the heat sinks. And then replace like a ton of screws. Just remember when you're replacing this heat sink that these two screws here are the longer screws. So I've got all the screws in there. Next I'm going to replace the radio onto the radial face. And then replace the four screws on either side. Well, all the screws are done and everything's back together. Now it's time to put this back in the car. So now I'm going to plug in the radio. I'm going to first start with the green wire up here. And then the blue wire at the back of the radio. And then the antenna plug. So I'm just going to run my auxiliary wire down into the dashboard. And then loop it around this way. Then I can place the radio into the dashboard. Then I'm going to replace the three screws on the top. And then I'm going to replace these two screws on the bottom. And then now I can replace this top panel. And that's pretty much the FM auxiliary hack. So the second way you can get an auxiliary input on your car is if you hack into the CD changer or any 14-pin Honda accessory device that connects to the radio. So this 14-pin connector is meant to connect to any external cassette players or CD changer. It just connects underneath the radio here and it gives you a 14-pin out here. Now my CD changer isn't exactly working properly. What I'm going to do is hack into this 14-pin connector and add my auxiliary line, then connect the CD changer to fool the radio into thinking that there is a device attached and then we'll actually select the input from my phone. So this here is the pinout for that 14-pin connector. On the left side here, you've got your power wires, then you've got your bus wires to control your CD changer. You've got some ground wires here, and then your left and right wires. What we need to tap into is the right plus, left plus, and shielded ground wires. So if I lift up this tab here, using that pinout, I'm going to hack into the left plus, right plus, and ground wire for my auxiliary line. So I'm just going to use my screwdriver here and pull out these pins. So I've got these wires pulled out here. Next, I'm going to attach my auxiliary wire using the pinout for the 3.5 millimeter jack to these lines here. So I've got my auxiliary line hooked up to the left, right and ground cables. So I'm just going to go ahead and connect these pins back into the connector and snap them in. So now you should have a cable that looks like this, the 14 pin connector with this auxiliary cable wired in parallel. I'm going to take this end and plug it into the radio to the accessory port underneath. Now in order to run my auxiliary lines, I'm going to drill a hole through the CD changer box and run it out to the console. So I've drilled a hole in the back of my CD cubby. I'm just going to run my two auxiliary wires through there and then back out the other side. Next I'm going to plug in my CD changer and then I can replace the CD changer into the car. Now I'm just going to proceed with replacing all the trim pieces and then replace all the screws and then we're going to replace the ashtray and finally replace the trim going around the shifter. So finally I'm going to test the auxiliary input. This is the one that goes to the FM radio. I'm going to plug that into my phone, press play, put the volume all the way up and then go over to my radio and tune into a radio station and you'll notice that the signal will automatically override the FM signal. So now I'm going to test the CD changer auxiliary line. I'm going to plug that into my phone, press play and then put the volume all the way up and then go over to my radio and select the CD changer here. In my case it gives an error but it'll automatically take the input from my phone. Now the difference in quality between the two is that the FM line will give you a mono input and it is a little bit louder and has more bass which is better for music. The CD changer on the other hand will give you a stereo input and it's much clearer and cleaner sounding. However it is a line level input so the volume will be a little bit lower. Oh look I found a penny. When was the last time you seen one of those? <laughs>